Fall at your girl Adiola. Where were you when you heard the joke? Me, I was enjoying a very good Thanksgiving dinner with Colledo when I heard the joke. Move closer, move closer, move closer, <laughs> move closer. Hey. Did Saraki really say that he acquired 95% of his wealth before getting into politics? <laughs> oh my god. Ah, Ogubukola, why, why not? He said, Kinen say, You don't really think that we are all stupid, do you? As in, 180 million of us in Nigeria. <laughs> you don't think we are stupid, do you? Abba, <laughs> we have not forgotten. Unta ese lora wake ese keke, a le gbagbe. Kololu wa ese gbagbe. We know how your family made it well, eh? Ogubukola, you are not a very good comedian. Stop it. Meanwhile, it has happened, gang, gang, gang. Did you guys hear that the former Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Bagudu, has said, was kidnapped yes yeah, so at the cardinal home of alaji maman daura and uh, that is the president's nephew you know the one that a lot of people have been saying not me just people they are saying that he is the real president as in is the one controlling things you you guys didn't hear that from me so you cannot quote me but uh, that is the man that travels with uh, buari everywhere he goes uh, and he doesn't have any official title by the way they wanted to pick him up too but uh, you know he escaped but thank god thank god that the ambassador has been released by the way the week before that police announced that they foiled an attempt to kidnap Bilonia Afemi Ote Dollar. The kidnappers were using Ote Dollar's GSM line to monitor his movement. And before that, CBN governor's wife was also kidnapped. In fact, many other chiefs, monarch, they've been kidnapped recently. Do you guys see what I'm seeing? Because what I'm seeing is starting to resemble what I see so, eh? Sure you get it. <laughs> kidnappers are now everywhere in Nigeria. That is what I'm trying to say. Not just in the Niger Delta. In fact, nobody is safe now. Benny, I know that there are kidnappers in every country, but our own is just getting worse by the day. Do you ever wonder why? It is because people are hungry, you know, Ilule. I'm not justifying kidnapping at all. Please, I'm not justifying kidnapping at all. I strongly, strongly condemn it. You know, I've had personal experience, so you understand. Not me, but somebody close to me. You cannot sleep, you cannot eat, and the police keep saying, come back tomorrow, come back tomorrow. In fact, the kidnappers are now asking for US dollars. In Nigeria, they will tell people in Nigeria, we need certain amount and you must change it to dollars and you have to change it to dollars before you deliver it to them and many people's lives have been wasted by this kidnapper so I am not justifying it in any way and those who make it out alive the trauma remains with them for life so no I'm not justifying kidnapping but this wasn't the case when I was growing up. Nigeria was not like this, okay? So there has to be a reason why. Come to think of it, when a few people keep stealing the money that is meant to create jobs, meant to pay salaries, meant to fix our roads, meant to make life better for the common people. I mean, this is a country where we celebrate corruption. This is a country where a confirmed thief can be boasting that he got 95% of his wealth from his family. When this is happening, people would resort to crime for survival. You get what I'm saying? Do you know what it's like to walk and walk and walk and not get paid for your ad earned money for seven months in fact some people a whole year and they have kids to feed do you know what it's like to graduate from the university your parents are very hopeful and then you don't get a job for six years do you know what that is like and again i'm not justifying kidnapping i'm just hoping that the people that are stealing our money would wake up and smell the coffee because there's something we call ripple effect even they are no longer safe you steal all this money but you may be robbed by armed robbers on the road you don't have peace when you sleep because they may break into your house at night you buy fancy cars but where is the road to drive them i saw a video recently where they were delivering a bugatti viron to someone in nigeria i don't know when this happened but it happened in nigeria this car is worth 1.5 million dollars okay does it make sense driving that kind of car on our roads <laughs> I don't get it. Unless the person will be driving the car only in Abuja. But even then, we have armed robbers in Abuja. No, so what I'm saying is, if things continue the way they are right now in Nigeria, kidnapping will not stop. And it's not that I don't want it to stop. I'm just saying it probably will not stop and it may get worse and they are now targeting a lot of big people if you've noticed and that's why we've been shouting for years that enough of this selfish way of wanting everybody else to suffer while you and your own family prosper at the expense of the multitude stop stealing the money meant for all of us because it's in the human nature to find a way of surviving somehow when people are desperate they will look for a way to survive even if it means committing crime four years ago here in new york we had hurricane sandy and and for the first time I saw total blackout. A lot of people lost power for days. That means some gas stations could not pump petrol. So there was shortage of petrol here. ATM were not working in some places. So there was shortage of cash and you couldn't even use your ATM card. You know what happened? People became desperate. Crime rate jumped overnight. People were looting. They were looting stores even in the daytime. I mean 
they had to eat. They needed to eat. So come and see the queue for petrol. We were fighting over petrol. I thought I was back in Uju and Leba. Why can I ask you the cause about the stuff? You tell me I'm yelling at you. I tell you I'm yelling at you. I take from this. Oh, oh, don't, don't yell, okay? okay. okay. My hearing is fine. Okay. okay, but there is a line now. Regardless if you drop that in the sky, there's a line back here. I have diesel, but you gotta get online. You gotta get online. I have diesel. Let's go. You're holding up the traffic. And the bus was so crowded, people were pushing each other just to get on the bus. You know why? Because they had waited for hours. I'm trying to say that desperation for survival is universal. If we don't take care of some things, crime rates will continue to jump, kidnapping will continue to rise. Once the system is not favorable, people will become desperate. Some of the money that some Nigerians have stolen, they can't even finish spending it in their entire lifetime. Yet, they're holding on to it. Meanwhile, Nigerian police stations get, uh, how much? 15,000 naira. Hey, every month. What is the meaning of that? Eh? And we wonder why police are collecting bribe by the road. That's a crime that policemen are committing because of corruption. So you understand? The cocoa of the matter is we need to stop corruption and crime rates will go down. But you guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Moving on to South Africa. I'm sure that by now you guys have heard about the prophet of doom. Yes! I mean, actually, his real name is self-proclaimed prophet Lesebo Rabalaho, a 24-year-old prophet at the Manzion General Assembly in the Limpopo province of South Africa. He was the one that prophesied that President Robert Mugabe of Zimbabwe will not die as a human being, that he will be taken to heaven like Elijah. This guy has been spraying people with a pesticide called doom. <laughs> as in, he sprays their faces right inside their korokoro eyes. <laughs> he sprays their legs. He claims that this is healing people. He said he has healed eye problems, cancer, and even HIV. South Africa? <laughs> but South Africa. You make me cry. Why? Just, just stop. Stop. In the meantime, social media is filled with memes about those guys. A lot of people are now buying their own doom in order to take with them for miracles. Like when you get to the ATM trying to withdraw money and there's no money left, just spread the thing and say, no insufficient fund formed against you shall prosper. Voila! Money will start coming out. <laughs> in door, my brother. Even if your balance was zero, trust me, money will start coming out. As a matter of fact, they've completely relabeled the product. Now it says kills bugs and demons. Eh? Even Jacob Zuma could smell the doom. He was like, what does that smell? <laughs> what does that smell? In fact, people can now ride the doom bus. Eh? Many people have been doomed so far, but seriously, forget about the person. You know, just forget about him. My problem is with the church members. I mean, look at them. Why? Why? Why do people love to be deceived? You will see people like this and would you ever think that something is not working here? Why would anybody walk inside that kind of church with their own two legs? How about now the company that makes the product Doom, they've already released a statement that this product is very dangerous to human health, that it's not meant to be inhaled, it's not meant to be sprayed inside people's eyes, and they've been trying to get the pastor to stop. But of course, the pastor said, no, 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 listen to what he wrote on his Facebook. He said, when you speak to the product, it becomes a healing product. <laughs> People get healed and delivered through Doom. Honestly, honestly, the guy believes his own lies. These are the words of the spirit. Carnal people cannot understand it. And we are led by the Spirit. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel that I preach. I deal with it important because I believe in Christ. He will never put me to shame. The guy actually believes his own lies. But you know what I don't understand is why people are surprised by this. Because this is not the first time that this guy will do something crazy. Like some months ago, this same guy was using very big speakers to deliver people. As in, he will put the big speaker on top of people. In the name, I mean, look at that. How crazy is How crazy? I will slap somebody. No, 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 it doesn't even have to be me. Or, no, first of all, it cannot be me under the speaker. But you know, just seeing that, I will slap somebody. And uh, do you have the one where he was actually sitting on the speaker? Yes, you see, why? Why? See, see, South Africa, why? Why? When they didn't stop him at that time, why won't he do another crazy stuff? Eh? Honestly, my people, these prophets of doom, they don't tire me. There's just too many of them. What is that? What are you? Call the wall! Call the wall! I'm going to kill you! You know you are dead! You know you are dead! So for rapid news of the week, Zambian president has slashed his salary by half as a part of a proposed austerity drive to turn the country's economy around. So right now the president is earning $45,000 per month. For Wait a minute. Hey, look here, from somebody, don't worry. You know you are dead already. I'll take care of you after this service. Um, $45,000 per month. How much is that in a year? <laughs> for what? For what exactly? 
wait a minute. How much is Obama collecting every <laughs> these African leaders? What do they do that they are making forty five thousand dollars per month? Ah, why now? Some of these African leaders they don't tire me. What are they doing? Exactly what are they doing that they are getting paid forty five thousand dollars per month? And eh? anyway, some people have been applauding this move that the president cut his salary by half, but some people are skeptical. They are saying that the presidency is yet to announce how they would use the remaining half of his salary once they cut the salary into half. And people want to know what they would do with the money. As a matter of fact, a lot of people have been sending their suggestions to the presidency on how they want them to spend this money. So we are all waiting to see what will happen. And in Mozambique last week, a petrol tank blast claimed the lives of 73 people. Hundreds of people jolted to collect petrol from the tank that was filled with 30,000 liters. The oil spilled around the trunk when the blast occurred. 43 people were killed instantly on the spot. And more than 100 people were also burnt, including children. Dozens of people are still being treated at the hospital for severe burns, some of them as much as 50% of their body got burned. And in Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe, my Zimbabwe. So last week I saw this video of President Robert Mugabe in Morocco during the climate change conference, and I was so sad. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Hey, just look at that, really, this man is so fragile, very very fragile. Why is nobody in his family telling him the truth that he needs to talk, just take time and rest, you know, just go on vacation, how about, at that age, you should not be worrying about things like this. Hey, by the way, those people that were standing, you think they were talking about him when he left? They were definitely talking about him. What do you think they were saying? That he needs to retire, that he needs to... That's what I thought. By the way, it was as if Mugabe heard them. Because days after that conference, the man announced that he will indeed be retiring. People were like, hey, say what? Mugabe said what? The only thing is we still don't know when, you know? But he said that he's seriously considering it. For those that are surprised, for those that are shocked, I mean, as a 92-year-old, shouldn't one be considering retiring? At least, even if you are yet to step down, at least you can be considering it so that maybe when you are like 100 and something, you can finally take action. Anyway, <laughs> a lot of people were surprised by this, but when I told my Zimbabwean people, they said, fine girl, move closer. <laughs> that is me, eh? <laughs> They said, um, people should not get excited because this is not the first time that Mugabe has announced that he was going to retire. I was like, no kidding. They said that he would say he's going to retire and then he would tell people that if you support me, you will be my successor and that's how he will get the support of so many people <laughs> and then he will run for election, he would win and forget about retiring. So they are saying that he uses that to actually get a lot of support. I said to them that you never know, maybe he means it this time, eh? but we would never know until we see it, eh? until we see so. Meanwhile, the first lady Grace Mugabe has told the ruling party ZANU-PF's Women League that she is already the president of Zimbabwe <laughs> because as the president wife she's the one that plans and does everything with the president yes uh <laughs> let me know what you think about that Grace is already president. By the way, they were asking her that. How come she's not even trying to be vice president? She said that is a small job. She wants to be president. Me, I'm thinking, do we even need election in Zimbabwe anymore since Grace is already volunteering to take over? Eh? Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. You guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Growing up in Kenya, my sister and I were very close. But like any sisters, we fought a lot. She always got new clothes, and I always got hand-me-downs. Now, she's putting her children through school in Kenya. We still fight sometimes, especially when I send money for the kids. I tell her, buy some clothes for the younger one, and we both laugh. With nearly 500,000 locations, our app and online, this is moving money for better. Alright y'all, it's been real and I'm keeping it real right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Until next week, I'm gonna see y'all later. Peace out!